it's Samantha from Dressing My Tutorials here and today I'm going to be showing you how to create an abstract African cane. So I showed two colour recipes at the beginning of the video. Uh, one was using cadmium yellow and some orange and the other one was using cad, um, excuse me, orange and some burnt umber. So those are the only two colour recipes uh, but we just needed to mute these down just a touch so that they would match with our other colours. So, to start we're going to take our um, yellow and we're just going to break off a piece. Just put that to the side for the moment. And then take this and I just want you to fold it in half like so. And then in half again. And then I'm just squishing this out so that it makes a nice even slab to go through my pasta machine and at the moment it is about two millimeters thick okay and put that to the side then grab your orange here is our orange and I'm gonna do the same thing split that in about half I'm gonna trim that down and make the same shape here and I've also done that with the pomegranate. So we're going to take the white, oh excuse me, the uh, yellow. And we're going to stack our orange on top. And then we're going to stack our red. And just press that down lightly. And then just trim. And we'll be able to separate those colours now. Quite easily and also just trim along the edge here you should be able to separate that as well into your separate colour groups so that there's no waste and again trim on that side as well and then we have this so it's quite nice so far Put that to the side and I want you to grab your Eliazar crimson and I'm just going to split that in half for the moment. Take this and I want to mould it into a nice solid plug of clay. Okay. Which we will use in just a moment. Now what you want to do here, with this one now, is you want to just take this and you want to gently flatten it out a bit. Because I want to put it through the pasta machine, but it needs to be a little bit thinner first. So just use your roller to gently start flattening that out. Then run it through and you fix it. And trim off these edges so that they're nice and clean. And then trim it in half. Then take this and I want you to just go along its length and pinch it so that it forms um oh how do I explain this? I'll show you. This, it just needs to form kind of a wonky shape like this. But it doesn't have to be the same the whole way along the length. The more different it is, the better. And I'm going to just cut one of those. And just continue manipulating it so that it looks interesting okay then I'm going to take this one and I want to just reduce this so that I can cut out two from this and then you repeat the same thing you just pinch along its length and I'll just maybe make some flat spots this pane is very forgiving uh, it creates a really nice effect but it is very random in um, appearance. 
it's a nice organic cane which is quite nice to work with okay so then you're just going to take these and you're just going to pop them down and actually it needs to be on the yellow side that we pop these down So, this one I'm going to flatten out a bit more to make it different from this one. And I'll place that one down as well. Like so. Okay, then take some more of that yellow that you had. Like so, roll that out in the thickest setting on your plaster machine again after you've just gently moulded it into a plug. Like so. And then I'm going to take it down so that it is a millimetre thick instead of two. Okay. And then just trim one end so that it's square. Or it just has a nice clean edge. And I want you to place it in the middle here. Like so. And then I'm just going to cut oops. Just going to cut that in half now. There. It does not have to fit exactly. We're going to make it so that it uh, fits roughly, but we don't want it to fit exactly because it's going to create an organic appearance later on. Here we go. Grab this one, the other half that we've been setting aside, and just place that on top. So, and just smooth along so that it doesn't have any air bubbles. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Okay, now I'm just gently pressing this together, shortening it a bit. And then what I want to do is I want to grab some round uh, rods. And Teresa sells uh, round cane benders. I don't have any round cane benders at the moment, so I'm making do with these. And what I'm going to do, and this needs to be the rod needs to be the same size as the cane that we're going to be making in a minute. I just want you to make little indentations like so along the length. press quite hard okay. and then just for the sake of a little bit of distortion I'm gonna just use a smaller rod to just make uh, fairly mild indentations like so okay now I'm putting that to the side and we're gonna work on our next cane so the next cane requires you to take some of that yellow Punch that up into a ball. And then I'm just going to roll that out. Then grab some white. And again, the thickness does not matter. Your sheet can be thin, it can be thick. It's completely up to you. Because this cane is organic, we don't have to follow exact. Uh, measurements as far as the amount of clay goes. It's completely up to you. I'm working with uh, two millimeter thick sheets but it really is just going to depend on you. Wrap that around, make a mark, trim and it should meet up nicely like so. Give that a roll. Kind 
kind of reminds me of a um, egg cane. It's almost the exact same colour as an egg yolk. Okay, then take some of that uh, Eleazar Crimson that we had before. And I should nearly have enough here. And so I have just trimmed off these distorted edges. Now seriously, that does look like an egg. Okay, and I'm just going to roll this out into a sheet that will fit. Okay. Then I'll just trim one end and the other end. And then wrap that around. Trim. So. Okay, and that's our beginning cane. The next bit. So now I want you to reduce this and let's see how many spots with this did we make. Okay, one, two, four and five okay so you need to reduce this so that you could fill in those five spaces then just take it mark out where you want to trim and then trim out the number you need put these to the side and then you want to grab some more of that uh, crimson and you also want to grab some orange what I want you to do is I want to run out a sheet of the crimson I'm going to need some more and a sheet of the orange same thickness each okay then what we're going to do is I'm going to Lay this on top of each other and then we'll trim it to shape and then you can take off the excess when you want. There you go. Then quickly before carrying on, take off the excess because otherwise it sticks. And then you won't be able to separate the two colours. Then I want to cut this in half. So then you need to have another piece of the crimson. Okay. Then I'm going to take one of these, stack that on top, trim away the excess bits. Now I want you to reduce this down because I've put these in their place and I want you to be able to fit this between each one. So you're going to want to reduce that down quite a bit. And it's quite quick to reduce it, just use your roller. And I've got enough and they're all to the right size because each one's going to be slightly different you're going to have wide ones uh, you're going to have thin ones so reduce it into different sizes okay so I've got them all trimmed out and ready to go so now the last step is going to be to take a piece of white roll it out to a millimeter thick on your pasta machine lay that over your cane that we did a while back and just smooth it into the gaps okay, and I'll just use this
to get this into the right shape and grab a small one and just go on in and gently mold it Then I'm going to stick these into their right spots. And I'll trim away the white in a moment. Then place these into their designated areas as well. And push on it to make sure that that fits together. The last step is just going to be to flip that over and I want to just trim away that white. Okay, and then just gently push this top there together like so so that it sticks okay then we're going to take some white again and we're going to run it through the pasta machine to a one millimeter thick sheet and then we're going to lay it over the top again okay just smooth that onto the surface then okay. I'll flip Trim again, and that's going to be catching all of the um, bits that are along the sides that are not quite meeting up to the right spots. Okay, and we are all good to go as far as reducing goes now. So now, I'm just going to squish this up so that it all sticks together. just want to get rid of that little bit that's stuck on there. There we go. Okay, and then just press this together like so. And then use your roller to start reducing it. And I want to reduce it so that I can cut it into at least three parts and stack them. So you're going to be reducing for a while. But you can see it will move quite quickly. Okay. And here is what it looks like so far. Now you could keep it as it is now and you could use that as a border cane if you wanted. But I want to now go ahead and stack it. So before we stack it, we need to cut it into at least three pieces, which is what, which is the number that I want to go with. You can stack it as many times as you want, but I want to go with three and then I don't want to reduce it too much. So you can see you can either stack it so that it creates a mirror of itself, but I don't really want to do it, I want to stack it like this. But before we stack it, we need to just create a little bit of distortion in here. So go with a nice small uh, rod here. And just create some distortion. So it does not have to be a huge amount, it just needs to be enough 
that will get the same sort of effect that we have over here. Okay, then we're just going to take that, and I've also done it on the other side. We're just going to stack it. Press that together. Okay. And that is how uh, many times I would stack it. If you stacked it anymore, you would probably start losing a fair amount of the detail. And I'm not going to really reduce it. All I'm going to be doing now is I'm just going to be using my roller to press these layers together so that we don't have any air bubbles but I would not reduce it too much. I could reduce it a little bit more, but not too much because you're going to be losing a lot of that pattern. And you could use this cane in a lot of different things. You could be you could use it for um, you could use it bracelets, you could use it in a pendant as a border along the middle of the pendant. Uh, you could use it in a collar. Lots of things jar would also look quite nice. Maybe if you um, made the cane a bit bigger and stacked it a few more times. Or you could even take slices and layer them together. You could make some coasters. It would also look nice. Okay, and there we go. Reduced that enough. I don't want to do it anymore. Slice that. And slice that. And there we go. We've got a cool, interesting, very organic uh, but very quite pretty cane. So that's basically it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. Uh, it was quite fun to make a cane that looks like this. Um, so if you enjoyed it let me know in the comments below and I'll be making another cane next week as I am going to be doing a cane every single week for the rest of the year and and so if you have suggestions for canes that you would like me to do let me know in the comments below as I love suggestions and also if you would like to support this channel please consider becoming a patron as that allows me to do videos every single week uh, so do consider becoming a patron and as always I'll see you in the next tutorial bye for now